Well, I'd say first and foremost, let's, um, let's pull up cable here because this is uh, some quite dramatic moves that we're seeing in the British pound. Obviously, news over the weekend that uh, Bojo Boris Johnson is uh, going to align himself with the Vote Leave campaign for Britain leaving the the Euro, uh, leaving Europe has uh, really sent uh, the British pound tumbling. And so now we're running right into, as you can see, this is uh, down here at 140.80. Uh, this is the January lows. And if we pull right back out to the monthly chart, you can see it's, uh, it's pushing us down through these lows from 2010 um, down to these, uh, you know, down to the lowest since uh, since 2009. You know, we're in February at the moment, but uh, the, these lows were posted in March of 2009. Um, so, uh, you know, quite a, quite a number of years here that we've, uh, since we've been down at these levels. Probably debatable whether a, uh, uh, a move down of this magnitude is justified by Boris Johnson leaving the, uh, joining the, the Leave campaign. But nonetheless, you can't fight the ferocity of this down move. As you can see here, by most markers, if we have the daily chart up, we can see we're posting lower lows on the weekly chart, lower, lower highs. And uh, we've rolled over from this, um, you know, this previous support of him and he's, um, from these lows back in April. So the pr very real prospect of a double bottom at this uh, 141 area. But obviously, should we take out the lows, which would maybe be a bit of a stretch today, but it's possible. There's a lot of momentum here. I push through these lows, um, maybe even push into the uh, oversold territory on the daily RSI, could signal um, a bit more further downside to go. I guess um, one thing to sort of bear in mind here is that this is not a widespread uh, fear of um, Britain leaving the Eurozone. I'd say it's probably fair enough to say that uh, Boris Johnson joining the, um, the out campaign has definitely shifted the, the likelihood of Britain leaving the Eurozone a few percentage points. Potentially a game changer. He's really, he's one of the most popular, I mean, one of the few politicians that's actually known and liked from the from the British public. Can't say many British politicians are known on a on a first name basis. So it's pretty significant. Uh, but nonetheless, still, I think you probably got to say that the most likely result still is that. Um, Britain probably does vote to remain in the Eurozone. Just that, that would just, people will just choose a safer option, uh, unless there's some really obvious reason to, to vote against the status quo. We're probably going to stay in. And then the fact that uh, it's still four months away, so Cameron has obviously announced that the referendum is going to be on June 23rd. And that's four months away, so it's quite a, a long period of time between now and then, in which to start pricing a British exit. So. You've got a way up when we pull over down to this monthly chart again. When we're down at these levels, look, this is the range that cable's been in um, you know, since the financial crisis. It's pretty much been a one, you know, one, uh, one forty on the downside to one seventy on the top side. Um, so if we are pushing much lower, we're really pushing into the bottom half of this uh, this trading range. And at some point in time, um, probability suggests that we're going to find find a base. Mm -hmm. So we're hitting oversold levels for a second time here on this monthly chart. Obviously, in 2008, you know, there's evidence enough of how oversold you can get, you can get and stay. But that's an extreme situation. <clears throat> Probabilities again. So we're probably in for a bounce at some point, but certainly a bit early to call it at the moment. Mm But as I said, it's not a, it's not really a widespread fear at the moment. I'd say it's more con my take on this is more being more concentrated in the currency market because of its implications for any likely moves from the Bank of England. I mean, I think it's probably pretty safe to say now that the uh, the Bank of England's unlikely to raise rates before June 23rd. So pretty much not going to be raising rates in the first half of this year. Obviously, the Fed have already hiked rates. Um, 
you know, data dependent on whether they actually do so again next month. Uh, we did have we did have some slightly higher inflation and wage data from the U.S., so perhaps a bit more chance of the markets giving it. Uh, giving the dollar credit for, we're seeing a bit of a, a push higher across the board in the dollar today. So uh, that divergence starting to starting to spread out again potentially with the uh, uh, between the UK and the US in terms of uh, timing on the rates. But if you look at the the FTSE 100, you know we're obviously sizably up today, along with the rest of Europe and along with uh, US futures. And then if you look at gilts, pretty much flat. So. No real evidence of uh, concern across other markets. More, I think, that um, sort of Bank of England uh, rates divergence take on the influence of Brexit that's hitting the British pound. And as we mentioned, potentially a bit overdone the move in the pound. So while we're on that topic, let's switch gears to uh, two equities now. Now, one of the things that's been holding the uh, the UK 100, or in our proxy for the FTSE 100, obviously, back uh, for the last few years, is its dependence on on mining companies and uh, oil and gas. Obviously, that's been uh, particularly prolific in the last few months, with a with a massive sell-off across most commodities. Uh, but we have closed higher for the last five weeks in the FTSE 350 mining index, and that, that's been quite supportive of the FTSE 100. So it's actually been the, the best performing European index this year, and uh, it's largely as a result of that, that outperformance in the, um, in the miners. And so you can see, looking at this chart here, we basically, and I mentioned this in last week's webinar, that we basically tried to push this, push through this January 20th low. This is basically a failed breakout. Yes, we've made a lower low, but only for one day, and then we broke massively back to the top side. And so, you know, you'll see an equivalent here in the, um, a bit more of an obvious equivalent in the S&P 500 in the U.S. This is, this is tantamount to a double bottom. Uh, we haven't perfectly bounced off the previous low like a double bottom, but this is a fake out to the downside. And so we had this um, declining trend line. It's, you know, it's obviously not really valid because it's only two touches, but nonetheless it will be widely watched. You could say it's three off here um, with the slightly dubious connections. And so here we, we only ticked down slightly in uh, the FTSE 100, even though oil prices dropped a fair bit. Saw so US oil drop below thirty dollars again last week, but you know UK equities held up pretty well, and it, this looks like it could be the making of a break above this trend line. And I would say that would probably be the first uh, first move towards an eventual break of this trend line, and then a push back up potentially to these um, to the December thirty p and the two hundred DMA, and then we've obviously got that fairly clear cut resistance above at the six four fifty mark. Which were pretty much the the highs um, through October, December before we had this this latest sell off. So obviously, you know, we've got to we've got to watch the headlines for the um, the Brexit details. But for the moment, I think um, the risks surrounding a Brexit run pretty counter to the narrative that actually commodities are potentially basing a little bit at the moment and helping mining and oil and gas companies uh, push higher. We had that big surf in the in bank stocks; they seem to have recovered a little bit since then. Uh, obviously, with the HSBC's results today, um, they were disappointing, but. Year over year, profits flat, and you know maybe not as much room for concern as there was uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Now I mentioned the S&P. Let's have a look at that chart here. <clears throat> now I mentioned for multiple webinars in a row this uh, the importance of the 1800 level, and here you can see even more. I mean, it's pretty much is a double bottom here, but obviously we've slightly taken up the low, and then a massive short covering rally um, on the same day, and then the following day as well, pushing up, closing above all these closes for the previous three days on uh, on this 12th of Feb. So this was quite a game changer on February 11th and 12th. <coughs> And, uh, and now we've pushed right, and you can see this slightly lower low here has matched quite well with these uh, lower highs here. And it's quite a well-defined uh, double bottom here with a slightly down-sloping neckline, and that's right what we're pushing into at the moment. So 
of course you can get the fake out higher um, and that that could well happen for the time being uh, but if we get a close for the day above this declining line I think that significantly increases the odds that we get a push back through 2000 and then back to the 200 DMA in the S&P 500 and given how negative sentiment is towards the market at the moment that may happen, happen uh, quicker than you might expect if you are of the opinion that we're sort of rolling over here in markets and it's a bit of a not a bear market, but it's certainly a downtrend. The the up moves within a downtrend are always some of the most rapid. So two two markets kind of supporting the same idea there. If we have a quick look at the um, the Nasdaq, you can see here that um, again we have this upsloping trend line here, a, f a false move down through the low, and then a nice reversal for that week, and then we pushed we pushed higher for the following two weeks. And uh, so here, uh, quite a, again, an extreme example of here was the low. If we look on the daily chart, similar deal. Here was the low. Tried to push lower, barely did. Spike, you know, a, few, a long candlestick um, wicks at a, several days in a row, and eventually just pushed back higher. And so I think uh, here is sort of the equivalent. You can say there's probably a bit of a downsloping line there, but more concretely, if we push through 4300. Then again, short distance of 200 DMA, and then you know potentially even the top of the range again. So important at this juncture, you know, this is um, this is a possible scenario. Obviously, sentiment's fairly bearish. The trend is still pretty much to the downside, but some evidence of a basing here across these global equities. And so, try not to get caught too caught up in the uh, the, the the negative headlines. Because actually, there's a few reasons to think maybe we're basing a bit here. Um, this is obviously just a sort of short-term tactical idea, not saying that um, you know we're off to new record highs and the bull market's back on, but just for the um, for the next month, perhaps you know, actually things could be a bit more positive potentially if we get these breakouts from these bases. Now, if we're jumping ship here to the currency markets, um, a few things going on here events-wise. As far as the U.S., a bit more concentrated into the, the tail end of the week, uh, we've got durable goods on Thursday and uh, US G second the second edition of U.S. GDP on Friday. Uh, we've also got quite a few Fed speakers, Lockhart, Williams, and Powell all speaking on Friday, Bullard talking as well um, earlier in the week sort of a more midweek. Uh, we have Fisher talking tomorrow and U.S. consumer confidence tomorrow. Uh, but just looking at this euro chart here, if I zoom in out a bit, uh, this, I think, is significant, the move we're taking, taking place today. So obviously we get a big drop off in the pound. Um, but again, I think it probably supports this idea that, hey, this is, you know, this, this is just extra weakness in the pound, but actually there's quite a lot of dollar strength feeding into that sell-off as well. We are getting a pop higher in um, in euro pounds, so certainly there's a there's certainly a, a bias factor here. But um, when you're looking at sterling and its biggest drop since 2010, part of it is the uh, dollar side of the equation. Now, what's interesting here is this is actually a decent reversal candle, uh, reversal pattern here, a, um, a tweeze the bottom, as I mentioned in a chart forum. The fact that we've, we've completely failed to push higher from that tweezer bottom and we're breaking below it on the very next candle is a, is a bearish sign. So the failure of a bullish sign becomes a bearish sign. And so the fact that we've um, pushed through here would suggest to me that actually this quite well-defined support here, if you, if you discount this push up into the 200 DMA on, on these levels, um, there was a triangle pattern here that I'm sure a lot of you have in your chart, but actually, if you're looking for a decent horizontal level, it's actually this 1.0980 level in cable, um, just below the, the, the 110 handle, obviously. Um, could find a bit of a bid. Now, I haven't actually checked FIB levels. If we go off this low here, do it a bit on the fly here. We've got the 61.8 just ahead of 110, and then maybe if we go right up the lows, we've got the 61.8 just below 110, more like 109, uh, sorry, 109.80, so more like 109.70 looks like. So in that vicinity, if you take that whole move higher, 
um, a little bit of a confluence of potential support in that area to look out for. Probably uh, also, I don't necessarily like uh, the trend lines when the move is obviously already carried away in much higher momentum. It means this trend line has a bit less relevance, but still, if we do push through there, then that could be the next step down at just 109. Uh, 109 in the rising trend line, bit of confluence there. Um, as far as uh, as far as EU data, um, tomorrow we've got um, the German IFO, um, and we've had PMI data today. But otherwise, um, not so much on the European front. We obviously heard a lot from from Draghi, etc. In the last couple of weeks, that hasn't really worked too well to hold up the euro. We obviously got that initial breakup, but we have been pushing higher since, uh, pushing lower since in the euro. Euro kind of acting a bit more in line with equities at the moment. It's um, you'll notice that the euro and gold both broke out um, at a sort of similar time. Um, when there's there's disquiet in markets, a lot of European investors bring the bring money back home to obviously convert from overseas money in into the euro, and uh, so actually we see a bit of a sort of almost like a haven effect for the for the euro. So back to just quickly back to, to cable again, because um, worth mentioning that uh, tomorrow we have the um, Bank of England Governor Mark Carney testifying. Um, uh, at the um, court of the infl uh, you know the inflation report hearings, and so that will add an extra story um, to the dynamics for the British pound. You know we are eyeing up this potential double bottom here. Well, we're just testing the low basically. Um, so whether this low holds for any sustainable length of time, I would say probably largely rests on what Mr. Carney has to say tomorrow, at least in the short term. And then if we do get a bit of a bounce off the lows, then, you know, there will be some other news along the way which will uh, support that move. We do, of course, have UK GDP on Thursday as well. And uh, worth noting that um, the PMI day today from Europe is a bit useless. So um, just as far as Q1 GDP for the Eurozone, uh, that's clipped estimates a little bit. So possibly down to 0.2%. For eurozone growth, whereas in the Europe, uh, in the UK, we're looking at 0.5%. So, highlights a little bit there the um, the difference in the uh, the two economies, and um, you know, if anything, that's a that's a that's a, a that's a, a positive for for those voting for uh, for the Brexit campaign. Another interesting one in the currency market, just as far as looking at the majors here, dollar yen. That was obviously the major mover. Um, just uh, just the week before last, we saw a massive sell-off in dollar yen, massive strengthening in the yen as a flight to safety when equity markets are selling off. But now, as we have posted this uh, sharp new low down to 111, um, we've seen a bit of a bit of bullish RSI divergence here, suggesting that maybe uh, you know for now the price has held off these two closes down here about 112.40. A close above yesterday, uh, above Friday's peak, to me would suggest that um, we actually could be up for a little rally up to the 116 former major support here, which um, you would expect to be some sort of resistance on the way back up. Now, over to commodity markets, a large reason why we're up in equities today is uh, a rally in the price of oil. Still very choppy in oil markets. Um, obviously, we had that. The main news as far as oil last week was that um, we've uh, we've had a a joint agreement to freeze production by uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia. Now, obviously, freezing production at uh, record levels is not exactly great news for for the, the oversupply of oil. But it, it, it's the first time that OPEC – not the first time, but the first time in recent memory that OPEC has sort of joined up with a non-OPEC producing country and formed some sort of agreement. And Saudi Arabia is obviously the big one. Venezuela are just desperate, and they were the main mediators here. 
and uh, Iran obviously they're just stepping up production again after years of sanctions so you can understand that they don't particularly want to uh, freeze production at what's way below their historical standard but uh, I think you can take away from their support that once they're nearer their historical standard of export um, uh, of exports of oil then they would you know then they would sort of join the freeze team does this really address the um, supply demand imbalance? Uh, looking at US weekly inventories, not really. We're at close to record levels of inventories. We're still uh, pushing towards uh, concern that we actually run out of storage in the US foil which is a, a pretty insane situation and obviously at that point if you have nowhere to store it what do you do it you have to sell mega cheap and so that that could be downward pressure on all of them at that at that point in time uh, but for a moment you know, 35, 36 is the, is the ceiling that we've got our eyes on um, we've, we've taken out this to, you know, sort of little shining trend line here through these peaks. Uh, we're pushing up to into the resistance again. So trend line break, um, potentially higher low here. We've had one one week, and then we had another week. So we're just kind of looking for a second week um, above to say that we've put a low in here. Um, you know, and that could all happen together with a push through 36. Now, still pretty bearish sentiment on all, but I think if we do get out of this 35, 36, it shouldn't be too much trouble to get up back up to 40, where we could struggle again. Um, but given how, you know, how, you know, look at if you look at this sell off here, and you had the you had the bounce back, really no particularly sustainable bounce back since since the sell off really kicked in again in May last year. So. If we do get back to 40, I think you'll see a lot of people covering, and we could get another push back up into the um, this four here, and the sort of just above 45 into 46, and then um, you know 50 would obviously be the target that everyone starts throwing around. In WTI, it's a bit more obvious, more of a kind of double bottom scenario. We're here again, one of these fake outs to the downside, nice little um, pin bar at the bottom. So we pushed up and uh, same thing where we've kind of, we broke through a little fake out of the trend line here, but we've held on to this low. Uh, for the moment, this sort of 29-ish is acting as support and we're pushing back through the trend line now. So I think if we close above this declining trend line, uh, you could adjust, adjust it to be a bit more conservative, connect it through the new peak, but a push through there probably easily carries us up to 34, and then 34 is more like the game changer for whether we've actually got a, you know, that's basically the neckline for this double bottom here. Um, yeah, important not to get too carried away in terms of how far this can go, because if you know, if you just scale out to a weekly chart, you know, look at this, uh, this little squiggly bit at the bottom here, doesn't mean too much in the context of this huge sell-off. Um, so you know these are bigger swings. You know this was potentially a bottom with these big swings here, uh, but it never quite happened. We took out the low and, and rolled over again. But it's that sort of size move up from 40 to 60 kind of thing, or you know in this context it was more like a move up to 40 and then down again before we saw something like a bottom. Mm -hmm. Likely it is that we're close to a bottom and it's just going to be range trading conditions under fifty dollars. That's that's my base, base case scenario. But um the good news is from a trading perspective, probably some pretty big moves in the interim. Gold, uh yep, I will have a look at copper to top things off and I'll just have a look at gold first. Now this is the short term we've got this is the huge rally. Uh we we capped out at two um the sort of 1, 2, 50 was the sort of round number involved, also fit in with this declining channel, if I show you on the weekly chart here. So now we're retesting this broken declining uh, trend line here, but I think probably odds on are that um, since we're not following through on this push higher from this old peak, which you can see better on the um, on the daily chart here, you know, we've pushed off that old peak nicely. That worked perfectly as resistance broke support, but we've um, we've rolled over it inside the channel. And today's move of down two percent is um, not a great sign. There's still, chance that one one ninety can act as support again. 
Uh, but I would say probably odds are that given the size of the move higher, a potential recovery in equity markets, if that plays out, um, then, you know, probably you're going to get a bit of a pullback in gold. I would say the move higher in equities is probably going to be bigger proportionally to the pullback in gold. I think maybe people might just start looking to the 1150 round number as a sort of uh, more like kind of random area of potential support. If that gives way at the moment, the 200 DMA is down on 1130, but, you know, by the time that, by the time we get down there, you know, it could be more like the sort of 1140. So look at that 1140 to 1150 potentially if we get through this fairly clear cut support at 1190. So I'll finish things off with copper. Um, I'd say, you know, this is, um, you know, it's not it's not great, but it's it's potentially a um, inverse head and shoulders here in um, in copper, and you know this is part of what's helping not just copper but iron ore, some of these other commodities. Um, it's helping what's um, helping the miners do a bit better. Um, the likes of Anglo American, top of the FTSE today, um, they're starting to sell off assets. They're talking about selling the De Beers headquarters. Um, they're adjusting to, um, uh, you know, slower demand for commodities, and at the same time, the commodities themselves are um, adjusting to the fact these mining companies are kind of reducing their output a little bit. So, uh, to, I'll say 2.13 to 2.14 is, uh, is really the line in the sand here. You can see how many touches we've had on that resistance. Um, really due a break at this point um, is, is basically the neckline of an inverse head and shoulders. <clears throat> and I think that would probably take us up to the 200 DMA should we get through that. But um, take another height of the pattern, you could do it like that. You'd do like a, um, you'd have two, about two, three, four. <clears throat> Or conservatively, the 200 DMA around 230 at the time, maybe, as a, a target if we break through here. The trend is obviously down, got to be a bit cautious, but looks like a bit of a base. Okay, that's it for this week's charting analysis. Thanks a lot for your attendance. Been some interesting moves in cable so far. Looks like it could be an interesting week. Uh, let's see if we get those breakouts in, in equity markets. Could be a lot of opportunity to the top side should that happen. So uh, good luck with the trading. Thanks a lot again for attending. Sir Jasper Lawler signing out.